Hi, my name is Corey and I will be your Prep Scholar Math instructor today as we learn about a very important topic in arithmetic, percentages. For this lesson, we will first discuss percentages as parts of a whole, then discuss how to convert back and forth between percentages and decimals. We will then review how percentages can show up in word problems and conclude with how to calculate percentage changes, including percentage increase and percentage decrease. Let's begin. Percentages, or percents, are a special type of ratio number. Percents represent a part of a whole amount, where the whole amount is divided into 100 equal parts. Percents are calculated by dividing a part by the whole amount and then multiplying by 100. Let's look at an example. Suppose we have a circle divided into eight equal parts. What percentage of the whole would five of these parts be? To calculate this, we use the value five for the part, the value eight for the whole, and then plug these numbers into our percent equation. Doing so, we can see that five parts from a whole consisting of eight equally sized parts is 62.5% of the whole. While percentages might be a convenient way to describe the ratio between a part and a whole, math equations require us to convert percentages into decimals before we use them in calculations. To convert from percentages to decimals, we just divide by 100. This makes sense after all, since one symbolizes a whole amount and 100% is equal to a whole amount. An easy way to think of dividing by 100 is moving the decimal place over to the left two times. So for example, to convert 37% to a decimal, we move the decimal point to the left two spots to get 0.37. Similarly, we can convert from decimals to percents by doing the opposite, multiplying by 100. So for example, to convert 1.25 from a decimal to a percent, we move the decimal point to the right two spots to get 125%. On test day, we can expect to have percentages mixed into word problems because otherwise the questions would be too easy and everybody would get them right. Quite often percentage questions increase their difficulty by hiding the value of the part or the whole or both. Let's try our hand at a question. In this question, we have a bakery that sells 40 cookies on Monday, sells 85 cookies on Tuesday, and then it has 75 cookies remaining and we want to calculate the percentage of cookies the store sold. Let's start by recalling our formula for percent. Let's try to figure out the value for the part and the value for the whole in our percent equation. For the value of part in the percent formula, we're interested in the cookies sold by the store, which we can find by adding together the 40 cookies sold on Monday and the 85 cookies sold on Tuesday, giving us 125 cookies for the value of part. For the value of whole in the percent formula, we need to know the total cookies the store had at the beginning. Here, we can add together the cookies sold by the store, which is 125 cookies, and the cookies not sold by the store, which is 75 cookies. This gives us 200 cookies for the value of whole. Now using our percent formula, we can calculate that the store sold 62.5% of its cookies. Another favorite type of percentage problem is percent change. Here's the equation for percent change. We take the difference between the original and new values of something, divide by the original value, and then multiply by 100%. There are two types of percent change. We call it a percent increase if the percent change is positive, or a percent decrease if the percent change is negative. Let's try our hand at a question now. 
Here we have a container that had 20 gallons of water yesterday. Today it has 26 gallons of water. So let's calculate the percentage change in the water volume. For percent change questions, we should first identify the original value and the new value. Usually we can use time to help us figure out which is which. In this question, the water gallon originally had 20 gallons, and then later it was changed so that it had 26 gallons. In other words, we want to choose the 20 gallons to be the original value because this value came before the water volume was 26 gallons. So the value will be 26 gallons for the new value, and the original value will be 20 gallons. We can then find the difference between these two values and divide by the original value, then multiply by 100%. This will give us a percent change of 30%. And since this percent change is positive, we could also call it a percent increase of 30%. Let's do a recap of our percentages lesson. First, we learned that percentages, or percents, represent a ratio of a part of something to the whole amount, and we multiply this ratio by 100 before attaching the percentage symbol. We also learned how to convert between percents and decimals. To go, from per to go from percents to decimals, we divide by 100, or think of it as moving the decimal point to the left two places. To go from decimals to percents, we multiply by 100, or think of it as moving the decimal point to the right two places. We also learned that when doing word problems with percentages in them, we need to be very careful that we choose the correct values for the part and the whole. After all, the test writers need to find a way to make sure that everybody doesn't get the question right. So definitely take your time and read the problem carefully before hastily choosing the part and whole values to use in the percent formula. And finally, we learned how to calculate percentage change, which we call a percentage increase if the percent change is positive, and a percent decrease if the percent change is negative. Feel free to review this lesson again anytime, and Prep Scholar is rooting for you to succeed on test day.